Ross. Just take a little sip of this water. Easy now. There you go. Uh, thanks, little brother. Yes. Is the doctor in? No. What do you expect? I don't expect him. Oh, Ma'am, my son's in that wagon. He's been badly hurt, and he needs immediate attention. I'd appreciate it if you can tell me where, when, and how I can see the doctor. The doctor can't help you, sir. He can't help anybody anymore. When the sun sets this evening, you can take my husband and hang him. The law judged my husband a murderer. Is there another doctor in town? No, none within 50 miles. I, 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 I don't want to impose on you, but my son's in great pain. Could bring him into your husband's office and, until I can decide what to do. No, you can't bring him in. Mrs. Johns needs a rest. Oh, Danny, of course. Bring him in. I'll do whatever's possible. I often assisted the doctor, and Danny served as his handyman, and between us, maybe we can ease his pain. Thank you. Is the dog in? Across the street, I'm going to get him. Look, as soon as you get horse into the house, right on back to the herd, huh? Well, he'd like to stick around and find out what's wrong. Oh, look. I think like Paul says, don't fret over me, I'm going to be all right. You two would do anything to get out of a little work, wouldn't you? The horse is right. Your worrying isn't going to help him or yourselves. Oh, now, wait a minute, Pa. Now, don't argue with me, do as I say. Please believe me, it's better this way. You get him into the house, will you? Nothing in there that you want to see, mister. Dr. Johnson's in there, isn't he? That's right. Him and Sheriff Wells got the whole thing to themselves, and it's going to stay that way till this evening. I'm going to see the doctor. Now, hold on. They gave me two extra dollars to sit here and see that no one gets inside. Now, I'm going to earn them dollars. So now you back off. Try anything and you're dead. Sheriff, I come here for help. My son needs help. He jumped me, Sheriff. Let me have him. Hold it. Put your pistol on the desk. Come on. Now, what's this all about? The sheriff, all I want is a couple of minutes with the doctor. My son's been injured. Back outside, Hoff. Well, if you're willing to risk your life for a couple of minutes with a doctor, I guess you're entitled to it. Five minutes, no more. Back off. An arm's length from the bars. Uh, I have a trail hurt bedded down about ten miles from here. Last night, my, my son got hurt. His horse stumbled and rolled on him. And I think he has some cracked ribs on one side. He's in awful pain. Why tell me this? You're a doctor. Not a doctor. A condemned murderer. I say I couldn't help your son, even if I wanted to. 
Well, uh, the sheriff would let you out for a couple of minutes. Just take a look at him. Wouldn't you? The doc is a condemned murderer. There's nothing I can do to change that. Well, who can change that? The only man has that power, Judge Grant. The Honorable Judge Grant. Judge Franklin Grant. Yes, he has the power. <laughs> the power of life or death. Where do I find him? Last house, north end of town. Just a minute. I haven't agreed to treat your son. You get permission from Judge Grant. Then we'll talk about it. Hold on. Don't hope for too much. You wouldn't like to try that trick again now, would you, mister? Grant. That's right. What can I do for you? It's urgent that I talk with you, sir. Won't you come in? My door is always open to anyone in trouble. Thanks, sir. Mr. Um... Cartwright, Ben Cartwright. Yes. Won't you sit down, Mr. Cartwright? You, uh, you're not from around here, are you? No, sir, from Virginia City. Yeah, I thought so. I know most of the people in my district. Mr. Grant, I, I, I just left my son at Dr. Johns's office. He's been injured. I need your permission to let the doctor examine him, treat him. That is out of the question. It could be a matter of life or death, sir. Last week, Johns killed a man. He was tried and convicted. As a criminal, he has no rights or privileges. All I want is for the doctor to, to look after him. I, I, I don't know and I don't care about the, the interpretation of the law. But I do know and I do care. It's my job to know and care. Now, Judge, I'm not asking you to set the doctor free. I'm begging you to let him do what he can for my son. The answer is no. But, Judge, there's no other doctor within 50 miles of this place. You mean, a, a, a horse fell on my son. His rib has been broken. I, I... something to make him sleep. How'd things turn out with you? Huh. Oh, I... I failed all the way around. I think your son has a serious internal injury. You said... You said you assisted your husband, didn't you? Why can't you do something for him? I don't know enough. I've done everything I can for him already. What kind of a man is that judge? Risk my son's life on a, on a point of law. The judge hates my husband. Hates him? Let me explain. My husband once treated the judge's wife. And in his opinion, she needed an immediate operation. The judge opposed it. But finally, because she was suffering so much, he gave in and it was too late. My husband's a fine doctor. But Mrs. Grant's infection was so far advanced, nobody could have saved her. She died on the operating table. The judge blamed my husband. Feeling this way. He sat in judgment on your husband? Yes. He condemned him to die, not for Stephen's death, but for his wife's. 
The right honorable Judge Franklin Grant is about to honor us with his presence. Come in, Your Honor. Come on, Danny. I'll get you some coffee. This is your only son? I have two others. And you have your wife? No. I have no children, no wife. Mr. Cartwright, do you know what it's like to be alone? To lie awake night after night trying to drive back the memories that flood your brain? And force yourself up each morning to face another empty, meaningless day? I've had such moments. Yes, I suppose you have. Do you know why I feel the way I do? Yes, I know. I'm not a cruel man, Mr. Cartwright. I'm not a callous man. But my wife would be alive today if John's hadn't... He's not a doctor, he's a butcher. That's why I don't want him to treat your son. But he is my son. It's my decision as to whether Dr. John treats him or not. Yes, it is your decision. I only hope it's the right one. You come with me now, please. Sheriff, this is Mr. Ben Cartwright. Oh, uh, we've met, Judge. Take the prisoner back to his office. Guard him until he attends to Mr. Cartwright's son. Then bring him back here immediately. Yes, sir. Off. He's to communicate with no one other than the people directly concerned with young Cartwright's condition. You heard him? Let him out. You heard the sheriff. Out. said if I got the judge's permission, we'd talk. Let's talk. You are a very persuasive man, Mr. Cartwright. Either that or a very powerful one. I didn't think you'd be able to do it. I didn't. It was the judge's doing. Perhaps. Are you the Ben Cartwright of the Ponderosa? Yes, I'm the Ben Cartwright. Well, now, you are a powerful man. And you mean to see that your son gets every chance, don't you? Yes, I do. Please, can we get started? Well, you know, it must be a comforting feeling to have wealth and power. I wouldn't know. I've never had either one. You see, all my wife will have to remember me by is a stack of unpaid bills from grateful but forgetful patients. Now, that isn't much, is it, to leave to someone whom you've promised to love, cherish, and provide for. Uh, doctor, please get... Mr. Cartwright, if you want my services... You're going to have to pay for them. I never expected anything else. How much? $10,000. Regardless of the outcome. All right, now, please, can't we get started? The money is to be paid to my wife. And judge, you're witness to this verbal contract. For with your dedication... Respect for the law. I'm sure that you'll see that Mr. Cartwright carries out his part of the agreement. Thirty-five years of my life have been given to that dedication and respect, and I've never abused the power entrusted to me. And what about you? What about the power entrusted to you? How many people have you butchered and maimed and killed and then hid your mistakes and incompetence behind the pr protection of your profession? Judge, please. You are a disgrace to that profession, Johns, and I'll tell you this. Of all the men I've ever sentenced to die, you're the only one I have the slightest regret or pity for. There's a 
little enough we can do for them. Has something happened? Are they going to stop? No. Nothing's changed. Boss, I got the doctor coming. The sedative that I gave the patient's worn off. He's awake. He's in pain. I'm Dr. John. Hoff, back to the office. Well, they tell me you went and got yourself roughed up a little bit. <sighs> yeah. They tell you about the other fellow? No. Only that he outweighed you by a thousand pounds. <laughs> I tell you. You tell me when it hurts, huh? Ah, he found it. Has, uh, has he coughed up any blood? Yeah, he started to this morning. Well, I think I know all I need to. What is it? Fractured ribs. The jagged end of one has probably punctured the lung. Meaning? It means your son will drown in his own blood unless the damage is repaired. Are you sure? I mean, the lung could be all right. Yes, there's that possibility, yes. But I won't know unless I operate. Do you have to operate? It's a risk. A grave one. I think so. He's got a good pulse. Of course, I'll check him over thoroughly first. Oh, Doctor says you need an operation. It'll be a tough one. How do you feel about it? He says I need an operation. I need an operation, Paul. I don't know if she need no more about it than we do. Besides, I'm getting sort of tired laying here on my, on my backside. I want this room cleared. The only assistance I'll need is that of my wife. I'll be out on the porch. You can wait in the study. Oh. Yeah. Don't you worry, on you here. I'll be out and see you in a little while. Yeah, sure. One good thing about it, you big moose. The scar won't show you. Still be as pretty as ever. That's right, comforting news. I was really sort of worried about that. gave me a chance. Upstairs, rest. I can manage here. No, you can't. You need me. 
I'm all right. Are you sure? I'm perfectly sure. I better get started, Doctor. Michael, I, I know it's not the time or place to say this, but... But I love you so much. I love you. There's never a time or a place where it's wrong to say... I love you. More ether. Back on it again, after four long years. Used to be quite a drinker. But then four years ago, I... I come down with a fever. No doubt about it. I was due for Boot Hill. But then Dr. Johns heard about me. Came to my house. Didn't get five hours sleep all the time he was with me. Afterwards, he, he talked me into kicking the bottle. He gave me a job as his handyman. Doesn't sound like a man who could commit a murder. He ain't. I seen the whole thing. But the judge wouldn't listen. He said it was murder. You'll hang by the neck, he said. And the doc even refused to help himself. Refuse to help himself? Well, it's... It's just that the doc is a spirited man. Not one to get pushed. But at the trial... He just didn't seem to care. What do you mean, didn't seem to care? Well, he just... Just sat there and let the judge condemn him. Danny. Danny, tell me what happened the night Stevens was killed. I can do that, all right. I can't sleep for thinking about it. Whiskey's all that's... Whiskey's all that helps. I remember every minute of that night. I was on my way home the night of the killing. And like I said, I saw the whole thing. As I was passing the newspaper office, I could hear two men arguing inside. I couldn't tell what they were saying, but they sure was gone at it hot and heavy. I stopped and listened for a minute. Doc, 
He's dead. He's dead, Penny. Doc, what happened? What were you fighting about? Nothing, nothing. It must have been something. Oh, it was about a bill, Danny. It was about a bill he owed me. He wouldn't pay me. I seen the whole thing. There's nothing to worry about, Doc. Better tell the sheriff what happened. What's going on here? I heard a shot. Sheriff, we got a dead man. It was an accident. An accident? Like what happened to my leg? He left it bent and twisted. I did everything I could for your leg. Yes, it's bent, but you're walking on it. You, you could have lost it. It's Stephen's own gun. It sure is. And I saw him pull it on Doc. It was self-defense, pure and simple. Is that true, Doc? Yes. Yes, we had a quarrel. And Stevens pulled his gun, and in, in the struggle for it, the gun went off. Well, with Danny here as a witness, you shouldn't have too much trouble. Why don't you go home now? I'll need you in the morning. I'll sign a report. All right, sure. Come on, Danny, let's go. Hold it. I wouldn't let the doc go home just like that, Sheriff. Not without seeing Judge Grant first. Well, what's Judge Grant got to do with it? Yeah, and it seems to me I'm still sheriff here. I say who goes home and who gets locked up. And I'm a deputy sworn to uphold the law. I say this man might be guilty of murder. Murder? It's a clear case. I didn't say it was murder. I said it might be murder. Especially in view of what I know. What do you mean, what you know? I know he threatened to kill Stevens. Sheriff, you say it was self-defense. Yes, sir. What proof have you got? The doctor's an honest man. Under the law, his evidence would be classified as self-serving. Danny Culp was there. He saw the whole thing. You'll swear to it. Mr. Culp is Dr. John's employee. That don't mean I'd lie. You have often said you credit the doctor with saving your life, hmm? He did. Yes, yes, perhaps, but the fact that you think so categorizes you as something less than a subjective witness. But I saw the whole... Enough. Johns, you say you went to Stephen's office about a bill he owed you? That's right. You quarreled about it and you killed him. Yes, we quarreled, but I didn't kill him. There are witnesses who say you wanted to kill Stephen. That's a lie. Half here says it isn't a lie. The other day I heard you and Stevens arguing outside the newspaper office. He said, I'll kill you, Stevens. Remember that, I'll kill you. And do you still deny this? I didn't deny we were quarreling. I told you it was about that bill you owed. Did you threaten to kill him? I don't know. I was angry. I might have said anything. Well, perhaps you will have sharpened up your memory by the time your trial begins. Trial? Exactly, Sheriff Wall. Trial for first-degree murder. Meanwhile, he's to be held in jail without bail. I feel very sorry for you. For any man whose grief is such a sick thing. Please believe me, Judge. Your wife was doomed to die. All right, Doctor. Please believe me. Your wife was doomed to die. And the judge was just the same at the trial. The cards were stacked. The doc didn't have a chance. The quarrel that started the fight. What was that about? Everyone claimed it was about an unpaid bill. Now, Danny. Does the doctor impress you as the kind of man who'd resort to violence to collect a bill? Oh, no. Matter of fact, half the people in town owed the doc. Yeah. And he didn't seem to mind before. There must have been something else they quarreled about then. But the doc kept saying it was the bill. He said it to me right after Stevens died. So you said. What was that again about a 
piece of paper. Paper? Oh, he dumped a whole tray of type. He, he seemed in a sort of a daze, but he kept looking for something. Then he found that piece of paper. He tore it up and threw it in the stove. Well, anyway, it was a kind of a strange thing under the circumstances. A man killed and Doc stops and tears up a piece of paper, throws it under the stove. How is he? Well, the lung was punctured. There was internal bleeding, and I repaired that damage and set the broken ribs. It's going to be all right. Well, I'll be better able to tell you. I mean, my wife should be able to predict his chances for you later on. I've done all I can. The rest is up to your son's constitution. Doc. Thank you. I hope you're not being premature. Oh, Mr. Cartwright, I wouldn't try to see your boy for a while. He's had a pretty rough time. The sheriff's impatient. Complain about the doctor's bill. I talked to him. Oh, yes. He's allowed visitors an hour before the time. Hoff. Oh. oh, just a minute. Your gun. Son. My son had a very good doctor. But I didn't come here to talk about my son. Sheriff, may we talk privately? Hoff, oh, will you get back outside? sacrificing your life. Not sacrificing, Mr. Cartwright. That's the wrong word. The law is taking my life for murder. Sacrificing is the right word. What does Cold Town, Pennsylvania mean to you? Well, the place where I grew up, as did my wife. And what else happened there? Nothing. We left there, came out here to open a practice. Then why did Stevens, after all these years, want to print a story about Cold Town and your wife? I don't know what you're talking about. I think you do. Save your son's life, Mr. Cartwright. 
I hope I succeeded. If you have any gratefulness, then forget about this. I can't. That same gratefulness won't let me. But it's, it's none of your business. I have to go to Judge Cranton. Show me this new evidence on your behalf. No! Sit down. I'm going to tell you about it. And after I'm through, you're going to agree that I, I am doing the right thing. You're going to know that I'm making the right decision. I'm listening. In order to go to school and become a doctor, my wife Karen worked in... One of the coal companies is a bookkeeper and a cashier to support us. And in my last year of school, she became ill, lung trouble. And all the money went for medical bills and it became impossible for me to continue my studies. So, she embezzled money from the company where she worked. You knew about this? Well, not at first. She told me she made a loan from the company. They started to audit the books and she told me. You ran away, came here. Then we started to save the money to repay the loan, and, and Stevens came out to start a paper. He knew about your wife? See, he was a reporter out of uh, Philadelphia when the theft was discovered, and he covered the story. Well, a possible jail sentence for, for Mrs. Johns. Surely that isn't worth your life. Have you ever been to Coal Town, Pennsylvania? Have you ever seen the coal dust hang so thick that it blots out the sun and breathe in that black death day after day? It kills people, Mr. Cartwright. And it would have killed her if we'd have stayed there, and it will kill her if she goes back. What about Karen? Don't you think she has a right to know what's happening and why? No. You should do what you want. Go to Grant. Tell him. She's a beautiful woman, Mr. Cartwright. And out here, she'd have years of life ahead of her. But if you go to Grant, hand him that paper, you're sending Karen to her death. Finished? All finished. How is he? We're still waiting. Did you see Michael? Yes, I... I thanked him for what he did. Mrs. Johns? Are you going to see him now? No. It would make it more difficult for him. I'm going upstairs. If you need me for anything, please call. I will. Thank you. Or everything.
you. I just dropped by to see how your boy was getting on. Will he recover? We don't know. I'm sorry for you, Mr. Cartwright. Well, this will never happen again. I'm on my way to see to that. You're going to see the execution? Yes, it's my duty to be there. And if it weren't your duty, you'd still be there, wouldn't you? Yes, I would. Again, my sympathy. Vengeance hanging. What did you say? I said you're going to a vengeance hanging. Your vengeance. Because of the strain you're under, I'll excuse that remark. No, don't. I meant it. What was your real reason for coming here, Judge? I told you, Mr. Cartwright, my concern for your son. No. Justification. To justify what you're about to do out there. Because if my son dies, that would justify everything for you. That would prove that you were right. And you're not. And you know it. John's murdered a man. He admitted it. No. He admitted to fighting a man, not murdering him. There's no proof of that. What is this? A newspaper article. A story that Stevens was using to blackmail Dr. Johns. Blackmail? Yes, blackmail. When Johns tried to destroy it, Stevens pulled a gun. I don't believe it. Read that article. What you won't find in that story is that Karen Jones is ill. If she was sent back east, it might mean a death. How do you know all this? I learned it from Dr. Johns. He begged me not to say a word of this to you, for fear that you'd take out your vengeance on her, too. Then why do you tell me? Earlier today, you said that you never abused the power entrusted to you. Well, I think you're doing it now. You're sending a man to death because of what you think he did to you, to your wife, not because you really believe him to be guilty. You're a liar. Then prove me to be a liar. Thirty-five years of your life have been dedicated to seeing that men receive equal and fair justice under the law. Prove me to be a liar. Or better still, prove to me that you're a judge. Not just a man using his power to seek revenge. Paul. You all right, son? Yeah. A little fuzzy. But a dang sight better than I did. A couple of days rest and I'll be ready to go out there and take on that old flea bag that's set on me and give him a good whooping. You didn't know if your son would live or not. Johns might have caused his death. Yet you defended him. My son had died. I'd still know that the doctor had done all he could for him. Just as you know that he did all he could for your wife. He's only a human being, Judge. Nothing more. He can't play God. No one can. Paul. What's all that about? Take it later, son. Everything's ready, sir. Just waiting on a word from you, Judge.
Bring him down from there. Oh, just a minute, Judge. This man suffered enough already. I say if we're going to hang him, do it now. Don't drag it out. We're not going to hang him. He's innocent. <laughs> Understand. I think I can use my office to see that you, both of you, need suffer no further anguish. Thank you. Well, now, I think we ought to be getting back to our patient, don't you? Cartwright. Thank you. 